Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on February 13th, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Always starting out here looking at the last 48 hours imagery of our sun, as it has been pretty busy as of late. If you've been subscribed and following along, multiple M class solar flares, even an X class solar flare to talk about. But just recently on the incoming cresting limb here, we do have some activity, some massive plasma loops. This is the last 48 hours incoming. Big plasma shot there. And then that's what I'm talking about on the right hand side. Very active region has been producing multiple coronal mass ejections on the back side of the sun and as well outgoing on the left. This is the last 48 hours income or outgoing multi-spectrum pointing out the last 48 hours of events. You can see that flash in the background. It's definitely an active sunspot region on the back side and most notable top left there, big plasma loops. We're going to have a close look at those right shortly as we show you exactly where the coronal holes are as well. Plasma filament in the northern hemisphere just north of the coronal hole. Heads up and stay tuned because we do have an active seven sunspot regions right now. Amazing images here of our sun. 171 angstroms mixed with daily events worldwide brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. And here are those plasma loops and solar tornadoes on the surface of the sun. Amazing stuff. I want to thank you all for being a part of this channel and all of these amazing images being shared. It's almost 70,000 strong worldwide. Having a look at Lasco 2 showing this is the last, this is from the ninth, so the last four days of cosmic energy leaving our sun. So we've had three, if not four, Earth facing solar flares, and as well, multiple events on the back side and on the left hand side. So cresting in. Lots of plasma filaments, and we've been talking about that this all this last couple of weeks. Current space weather conditions, we are under R1. Minor radio blackout impacts still expected, and level 2 moderate solar radiation storm impacts. And throughout the day today, uh, level 2 geomagnetic storm impacts. So possible auroras for tonight across the northern hemisphere and southern Solar X-ray flux, no new major events to talk about. M-class solar flare, long duration last night, but nothing major. Geomagnetic activity hopped up to a 3.5 throughout the day earlier today. And we are still under that solar storm. From these CMEs, having a look at the Space Prediction Center, showing those massive CMEs leaving our sun. CME stands for Coronal Mass Ejection. Anytime there's a solar flare or a plasma filament, they can produce these. So then that induces a geomagnetic storm on our planet when they're Earth facing. It took about 36 to 40 hours for those events to arrive. And they're arriving all throughout the day and Valentine's Day. Having a look at the ISWA space prediction spiral showing the most recent CME outgoing. And here is a look at the Aurora forecast, Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. So definitely across Canada tonight and Alaska, you will be seeing a geomagnetic storm. So look up, you may see an Aurora, you may not. Southern Hemisphere, same thing. You might actually see some Northern or some Auroras towards Tasmania, Southern parts of Tasmania. Current solar winds are 468 kilometers per second. And having a look at these maps, you can kind of depict what our magnetosphere is doing from those solar winds. This is having a look at the pressure that these solar winds are putting on our planet. So intense pressure all around our planet right now. Small bow shock from the increased solar winds. 
up to 468 kilometers per second. And then a look here showing our wind speeds. Darker reds being upwards of 500 to 600 kilometers per second. So yeah, we've been getting smashed by cosmic energy and radiation for the past 24 hours from these solar storms. Now let's get to earthquakes as earthquakes are always correlated with space weather events, especially when it comes to volcanic activity. And look at all this activity through the Philippines, multiple erupting volcanoes all throughout this region. They're in active and erupting 42 volcanoes I counted today around the world. 4.2 there, notable. 4.2 New Zealand. Westport, New Zealand. Quieting down through Hawaii. We saw an increase yesterday. Now it's quieting down. It's pulsating all across the Pacific right now, bouncing back and forth between Alaska, Hawaii, and of course, California, and now White City, New Mexico. That earthquake swarm from uh, California, El Centro, has since ceased. White City, New Mexico, now seeing a small swarm. Argentina, pretty quiet across South American plate as well, and that's been really quiet for quite some time. So heads up, South American friends, we could see something brewing down there. There are five, if not eight, active and erupting volcanoes all along the coastline there. Quiet across the African plate and Europe, not much to talk about. USGS is reporting 258 Earthquakes in a 24-hour period, slightly above average. The average is about 200 to 220, so still slightly above average, and most of the activity has been in White City, New Mexico, and also what uh, El Centro reporting only 20 earthquakes throughout the day today. So kind of strange, just all you know, all of a sudden see this. Earthquake swarm happen and disappear. Our plan is going through some big changes, and I appreciate you all being a part of this. Having a look at minor activity right up into the Pacific Northwest. And I did look at the Canadian website, and there are no new major earthquakes to talk about there. Having a look at the last seven days for shakers across the planet, we've seen a lot of activity through the Pacific Plate. After a pretty deep earthquake right here in between Kamchatka and Japan, right along the fault line. And deep earthquakes in Fiji this week. A sizable earthquake there, Hawaii. But literally this seismic energy is running across the North American plate like waves. South American plate, pretty quiet compared to what we've seen in the past, and as well Africa and Europe, very quiet. So you got to be mindful of these quiet zones, and as well mindful as to where these deep earthquakes are occurring, and how often, and this frequency of the events all around. Now let's have a look at the sulfur dioxide forecast. SO2 brought to you by our 42 active and erupting volcanoes across the planet. And there are three across the Aleutian Islands, and we've got at least eight to ten stretching from Mexico to uh, Peru. And lots of still geothermal coming out of Alberta, SO2 from the Alberta foothills, and then overlooking Russia and Europe. Quite a big eruption through Kamchatka and still erupting. Forecast models showing a big plume swimming, swinging all across the northern hemisphere right now. We are being inundated. Notable plumes coming out of those two regions there in Russia. Overlooking Australia, South Africa, 
and all through Indonesia and the Philippines, you can see active and erupting volcanoes. Johannesburg, South Africa is a little bit different. Mass population and industrial revolution down there. Overlooking Europe and the Atlantic Ocean. Not really sure where all the SO2 is coming from across the Atlantic right now. That's just probably swinging around and being pushed southward into our ever-changing winds. Speaking of which, let's have a look at our wind models. If you want to see the full world weather forecast, look at last night's video or tune in tomorrow. Not much has changed since last night's video. But I wanted to show you here the strong wind gusts and strong low pressure systems that are developing in the long range forecast. Huge system in the Atlantic, North Atlantic, heading up into Greenland. And as well, strong system heading up into California, which was forecasted. Now, this is showing all of the wind gusts. Strong system moving up into the Atlantic provinces in the long range as well. So Newfoundland, watch out. You've got a big one in the long range forecast. 21st to 22nd, making landfall. Looking across the rest of the world, interesting systems in the Southern Hemisphere right now as well. Low pressure in the South Indian Ocean and strong low pressure system moving across Northern Territory of Australia. They look to be like they could be joining forces in the long range. Possibly even changing direction. And then look at this massive system developing in the long range for the Pacific as well. So both the Northern Pacific and North Atlantic long range forecasts are showing massive low pressure systems. They're getting bigger. Is it the day after tomorrow yet? Or is it all our fault? Who knows? But I'm pretty sure that it's all due to the solar cycles that we're going through and have been since the beginning of time. So thanks everybody for watching and I'm really happy that you subscribed to Daily Events Worldwide. Stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun, and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.